Cool. All right. So I'm going to talk real quick also about kind of the rebranding of Alcohol Inc. and do uh, an Alcohol Inc. background just to give you some ideas of using that. I think having some different demos to go back with Alcohol Inc. is also good. This is a medium that a lot of people really like. They like using it because uh, there's a whole different different generation working with these. Um, I found a lot of fine artists are using these now, which is pretty interesting because you can use that and in, in they're using it in paintings and home decor, all sorts of cool things. So here's the thing to know about alcohol ink. First of all, it's a solvent-based ink, of course. So that means it's going to be a very fast drying ink, five to seven seconds. It is designed for non-porous surfaces. So we're talking metal, plastic, glass, gloss paper, transparencies. We have added six new colors. So we have mermaid, this one's poppy field, we have honeycomb, indigo, teakwood, and I don't know where botanical is. There's a green one floating around, it's botanical. So what's cool about these is that these colors, they're, they're just more intense colors. They're not an earth tone, they're not a bright, they have a, a really high concentration of dye, which really gives it a bold color that complements with the rest of the palette. So if you're gonna do some backgrounds, here's just some simple background reminders. First I'm gonna go in with just a piece of felt, put it on the ink applicator tool, and then I can go in with some colors. So if I'm going to do some different colors, I can just go in and squeeze some color. Now, one of the colors I really like is the new indigo, but it is, it's intense. So, you know, we're talking a little bit. It's, it's an intense color. Use a little lettuce on there. And let's just do some mixative. So the metallic mixatives, you have to shake those up because it is a metallic pigment. So we need to make sure that it's dispensed in there. But these metallics are concentrated, so pretty much a little drop of metallic is enough to do an entire background, usually about a 12 by 12 background. So on a surface like this, you're just gonna go in and start stamping out that color. First, you can see how intense that indigo is, just from the start. And I'm just gonna tap that out. Now, what I'm gonna do is go in and blend. So first thing you're gonna notice on the blending solution is the whole new look of the line. We've revamped all the packaging for alcohol inks. Um, they're all located on the display over here. We got rid of that kind of earthy tone mountain kind of thing, um, made it just a bit more, they loved the mountain. Um, we really updated the whole look of it by creating a white background, nice color header, and really calling out that it's alcohol ink. That's what it is. So blending solution is to alcohol ink, what water is to watercolor. So you wanna go in and use some blending solution, and this is going to blend color, it's going to lighten color, and it's gonna remove color. So by adding this, it's still like, I'll even continue this paper over here. It's gonna create a whole different tonality or shade of my background. And I like to work with larger sheets for my background because normally I'll end up cutting out the part that I like the most, right? So you can shake that on to get it to react. If you don't like that reaction, you can go in and still mix it out. Every time you tap that blending solution, it's going to reactivate whatever layers are underneath. So. I think that alcohol ink probably has the most playtime of any dye ink. You know, because at some point, like with Distress, at some point you just made mud, where this one, you can just keep adding and building and you know, creating different effects, creating different layers. We were kind of brainstorming how we can use the spritzer with this. I've yet to try it, but I think we can take our nibs, our cut and dry craft nibs, soak it in blending solution, put it in the nib holder, and put that through there so we can spray it off. Water brush? <coughs> What's that? Your, the alcohol marker. Yeah, it won't fit in there. Oh. I know, I tried. We just we need the smaller one. Yeah. Um, so there's just a simple background that I'm going to probably just stamp on one part of it. Now, another background before I start stamping, let's clean this up, is doing it's like a model print style background. It's a fun one. <laughs> if I want to create a model print style background, I'm just going to take my inks, put that on the surface take my colors, <coughs> put those over the top. And there's really no right or wrong as far as the order of color or how many colors you want. I do want to add a little bit of that teakwood though. Okay. And then I'm going to add blending solution. And maybe we want a little bit of this too. Why not? Okay. Then what you're going to do is just take your paper, whatever your surface is, and I'm just going to go in, I'm just going to pick up some of that color. just to create my background. And whatever kind of swipe, that's what's going to give you the effect of your background. And some people look at this, they're like, what would I ever do with it? I'll show you. All right. So let's talk about one other background. 
Another cool background is just to use the colors and use the blending solution to create different layers of color. So, for example, if I want to choose a single color, let me replace my felt. And we'll work on our background. I can start with blending solution and I can pick a color, take a dot of that color, and this is going to allow me to, to take my ink, kind of mix it in a little bit, and then just start swiping it on my surface. Okay? As I swipe it on the surface, I can add more blending solution, and I can add more ink, mix it around, and continue to start building those layers. More color, more blending solution, and the more you go over the layers, because it is a translucent dye, the more intense that color starts to build, but the solvent in the alcohol ink will continue to blend it. So a little blending solution, a little more color, and we'll finish up that bottom layer. I want this to be a little richer. All right, so you really create kind of like a little ombre effect by creating those colors. And this technique is in volume three of Compendium. When did volume three come out? Volume three just came out at this show. Okay. Yep, so volume three of Compendium of Curiosities has all of the new stuff. It has the spritzer, it has frameworks, it has yeah, letterpress, it's got everything new in it, which is good. All right, so stamping on these. Well, there's a lot of different things that we can do for uh, these backgrounds. And I think sometimes if if you're not using backgrounds or your customers aren't using backgrounds, they probably just don't get it. So I think having them do some backgrounds, set it aside, and then having them go in and stamp, I think they tend to have that aha moment. Like, wow, look how that comes together. Ah, it does work. Yeah. So let's just take a stamp. Let's take her. Place it down. Let's take a stamp like this. I think she's going to be good kind of in... Uh, I think I'll use it here. So I'm going to work with Archival. I want to use Jet Black Archival because I need a waterproof ink. Something because I'm going to work on gloss paper. So here we can go in, stamp it out. Add some other elements, whether you want to do floral, whether you want to do scribbles. If you want to create a lighter effect, like if you have an all-over stamp like a background. We can take an alphabet or something like that and just swipe it. And that's going to allow us to stamp and create a light generation around the background, right? Pretty easy to do. Is that because you, when you swipe it, you don't force the stamp pressure, that's why, right? right? Well, you don't put enough ink on the stamp. So if by tapping it, we're putting a lot of ink on the stamp because ink is a suspended medium. That's why you don't need to store ink pads upside down. It doesn't matter. Ink pads can be stored any which way because it's when you press down, the ink goes to the top. All right? So by tapping, I'm going to get ink, but by swiping, I'm only taking ink that's right on the material itself. So if I were to stamp, you'll see that one side is going to be really intense and the other side fades out. Well, I'll show you in, in true color. So if you ever want to create that second generation, it's just kind of swiping it out. mock-up stamps at this show. What is that about? All right. What's that? I know. I said to him, like, what are these? He's like, oh, I didn't have time to make stamps. They're mock-ups. Like, oh, the show, huh? All right, so on a background like this, I mean, just go in. You can stamp your focal image on that. Here I'm just trying to create a little bit of texture in the stamp. If you swipe it several times, 
you will create a little bit more texture in the stamp. So see how you can get it to, because you're basically wiping ink on and off the stamp. background just from swiping it it's cool it's what I think a lot of people forget to do with their stamps they always think everything has to be ink just the same intensity and I think by doing that you you really lose the whole level of depth all right on this one I want to spritz it too Just some, just think it just creates a really cool effect. We'll see when I put it under the light. So there's just those little speckles in there. So you've got speckles, layers of images, and usually when I'm working on something like this, I won't use that whole thing on a card. I'm just gonna go in and cut and crop the part that I wanna use on a card. So when I use alcohol inks on a background, I like to just quarter cut the cardstock so you have a a little bit of space to play, but then you can go in and cut it and say, okay, I want to crop that, that's where I want my card to be, right? Or I want just to have that little layer, because, you know, you never know, depending on where the color is going to flow underneath, where that is, but you can see how, on this one, the monoprint, how that metallic kind of floats across. It's pretty cool. And I love the, I love the spritzing, I do. I like those little speckles on there. It's pretty cool. And if you want to do that through a stencil, you can do the same thing on gloss paper. So if we wanted to take this, maybe we wanted to do this, and we wanted to add some of that, we can still go in and do that through a stencil on our surface. add something else you know just gives it a different effect so same thing if you were to crop that it just gives it a whole different interest and remember distress markers are great on gloss paper okay they soak right into gloss yeah I know it doesn't seem right does it doesn't seem like it should work but it does you have to dry them I mean and the fact that I spritz it it's gonna sit on the surface probably a little longer than most markers, but if you didn't want to use that, you can spritz Copics, you can spritz a Sharpie, you can spritz whatever marker you want over the surface. It doesn't really matter, but pretty cool. Now, if you're gonna do small things, one last thing I'll show you with the alcohol inks is using the pen. So the pen, we've also renamed the pen. This was the, the alcohol fillable pen. We've now just called it the blending pen because that's really what it was for. A lot of people got this and they're like, okay, I'm supposed to fill this with my alcohol inks. Could you do that? Sure. But once you fill it with a color, it is that color for life. So the idea in the packaging now, it talks about filling this with blending solution. It's still a fillable pen, but you need to put blending solution in it. It's a dual tip. It's got a fine tip and a brush tip. The brush nib, you can go in with that metal, pull this nib out, take your blending solution, squeeze it in for about three seconds and let it soak into the pen. Do that again, do that again. You probably want to do that maybe three, four times. So the material in there absorbs the blending solution. Place the nib, place the airtight cap. About five minutes it's going to feed into each end. And so now I've got a pen that's got blending solution in it. And like I said before, <laughs> blending solution is to alcohol ink what water is to watercolor. So using Ranger's ink palette, I've created an alcohol ink palette. Two drops of alcohol ink in each well. It dries in probably about three to five minutes. And now I've got this entire palette. If you want to colorize it, you can go to the website, download the labels, print them out, punch it with the three-quarter inch circle punch so you know what colors are what. And now this allows me to use my alcohol inks different ways. If I have um, something that I've stamped, maybe I stamped on a transparency or I've stamped it in Boston, I wanna color it, I can go in with my marker and say, okay, I wanna pick up this color. And now I can go in and colorize with that and already blend and fade it. 
because the blending solution will blend, lighten, and remove color. I can pick up several colors, create a whole new blend of color. If I want to remove the color, you're just going to scribble it on a surface because it's going to be a self-cleaning paint as well, which is pretty cool. You want to pick up different shades and maybe we want to colorize charms or, I don't know, eyelets, brads, anything like that, and you want to tint it really quick way. You'll see a lot of projects in Ideology where we use the mirrored stars, but they look vintage. We alcohol ink every single one of them. Yeah, because they're cool when you alcohol ink them. What Fruits. color do you use to get that look? Uh, mushroom. Yeah, mushroom is the color of choice for that because it gives it almost like a smoky glass color, which is really nice. Or slate. Slate works really well. So slate you can see. Well, I'll just put it on a new one. Slate is a good color. Just depends on whatever comes out of the spinner first. So you'll see this is just, it just creates like a, a little dingy effect on this one. But I think both of these are really cool. Both of those colors. So I find myself in the studio aspect, I use the palette a lot. Because if I'm doing backgrounds, then I'm all over these bottles. But other than that, if I do a card and I'm like, oh, I want to add a little color to a charm or I want to change the finish of a, of a brad or something like that, I can just reach for the palette, take the pen, and I'm ready to go. Yeah, which is good. And the fact that, you know, from a student perspective, they can take alcohol links to class, like, just like that, if they're going to do any coloring. And people like to color on transparencies, they like to color on six surfaces, and they like to alter a lot of the things that they have. So, to me, that's very cool. So, there we go. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah.